the Children's Food Trust is welcoming the first steps in what is the recently launched obesity plan. Obviously, it's been the long delay of the strategy overall, but we are seeing this as the first steps. Like many others, we're very disappointed that this didn't go further in taking an opportunity to really address what we think is one of the biggest health problems that our children are facing in this country. Because our children don't choose to be overweight, but what they are influenced by is what they're learning and what they're seeing and what's available to them at home, in school, and in the wider environment as well. I think there are some welcome steps in the strategy. We really welcome the um, news that the school food standards are going to be updated to take account of the new recommendations on sugar and fibre. And we're already doing some work in early year centres around some new menus, which is great. We're welcoming the Ofsted themed inspection, which is another good way of us finding out just how much progress has been made in schools. And we're also really keen to see what's going to happen with the Healthy Schools mark or initiative that's being talked about for primary schools. We do question why that's not being extended into secondary schools, of course, because when schools are incentivised to, to prioritise something, that's always got to be a good thing. One of the biggest disappointments we had is this nonsense loophole that still exists with the school food standards. So there's still 4,000 academy schools in the country that just don't have to adhere to the standards and there's no reason that we can see that that should still be the case. So that's quite disappointing really. Obviously in the wider world, some of the initiatives that have been talking about are really going to help support parents. We're really keen to see what's going to happen around labelling and we don't know if Brexit will help that because obviously things will change about what rules and regulations we have to see. There's a really welcome statement in there about what food can be served in public sector venues. I've always had this, this wild notion about why can I take my child swimming and then come out and only be able to buy hot chocolate or a chocolate bar for them. It just seems a little bit bonkers. So that's great news that that's being fixed. And of course, the targets for sugar is, is great news as well. We still need to see much about how that's going to work. It is a target, it is voluntary. How is it going to be monitored? What's going to happen? We've already had the responsibility di deal and didn't see a massive impact of that. So this has really got to be meaningful and we're waiting to see much more detail on what's going to happen with regards to that. The sugar tax was still in there. That's great news. We know it was, uh, it was announced in March by the Chancellor and that's great news, it's even greater news that we can see that going back into schools, into breakfast clubs so we can get more children ready to learn during the school day. But again we want to see what the impact of all this is going to be. I think the biggest disappointment for us is there was no mention whatsoever in the entire plan about cookery and we know the impact that learning to cook can have for children and their families and yet if you go through the plan there is not one mention of the word. We think it's such a sad loss for them not to have taken that opportunity to really look at what those skills are, that they're vital life skills that children need. And we're really disappointed that they haven't taken this opportunity to look at that. We're also really disappointed that they haven't taken the opportunity to look at advertising and pricing and promotion. We, in our white paper that we launched earlier in the year with recommendations for government about what they might like to look at, we're really keen to see some more restrictions on advertising of bad foods, those with, that are high in salt, fat and sugar, to children before the 9pm watershed. And we were also really, really keen to see some more incentive for supermarkets and manufacturers and others to promote healthier products and make sure that the products that are on the, the buy one get one freeze and other type of promotions are actually the healthier not the most unhealthy products. So we're really disappointed that that wasn't in there. From our point of view government said this is the start of a conversation but I'm afraid if we were looking for this to be the route to solving our childhood obesity crisis we haven't really got that mapped out for us yet.